Signs of fatigue. When the dog starts to show signs of fatigue, try the exercise one or two more times to see if the proper position can be achieved. And if the dog is still unable to perform, then it is time to stop this exercise. One stride length can be approximated by measuring the dog from the ground to the top of the shoulder blades. If you have a dog that is longer than tall, for example a corgi or dachshund, then measure the length of the dog's leg from the back of the elbow to the floor to approximate one stride length. The pole height should not exceed the top of the dog's paw. Trot through Cavaletti poles. The goal of this exercise is for the dog to take one stride between each pole, while maintaining a slow, controlled, but consistent speed as the dog travels over all of the poles. This exercise will help to maximize the dog's shoulder and hip extension, improve balance and coordination, lengthen the spine, thereby improving the dog's top line, and increase body awareness. The poles should be spaced apart one stride length of the dog. When you are teaching the dog this exercise, it may be beneficial to have the dog on leash for control purposes. As your dog begins to understand the exercise, you can have them trot to a fit pause target or a canine fit bed. Be sure that the dog does not rush through the poles and only gets rewarded for correct foot placement. As the dog adjusts to the pole spacing, try pulling the poles apart in one inch increments to improve the dog's reach and drive. If you find that the dog is double stepping through any of the poles, then the spacing is too wide and must be returned to the former measurement. Do not reward for lack of self-control. If using a leash, do not allow the dog to pull or they will not be balanced. Teach your dog to work to a target as quickly as possible. So it is using its body properly and looking straight ahead, preferably not to the side. To determine pole spacing, measure from the floor to the top of the elbow. If you have a dog that is longer than tall, for example a corgi or dachshund, then measure the length of the dog's leg from the back of the wrist to the floor for pole spacing. For all dogs, to determine pole height, measure from the floor to the back of the hock or ankle. Walk through Cavaletti poles, turn circles right and left. The goal of this exercise is for the dog to be able to step over the poles, turn in a complete circle without knocking over the poles or cones, and continue walking through the poles. This exercise improves elbow, stifle, and hock range of motion, as well as spinal flexibility. Walk the dog through the poles, and once in the center, use your cue to ask the dog to turn in a circle, or use a food lure to get the dog to perform a controlled circle over the poles. Then continue walking through the Cavaletti poles to the end. Turn and go the other way and perform a circle in the other direction. Be sure that the dog does not rush through the poles and only gets rewarded for correct foot placement. Do not reward for lack of self-control. Be sure that your dog keeps all four feet on the floor when performing the circle to ensure that it is using its body properly. To determine pole spacing, one stride length can be approximated by measuring the dog from the ground to the top of the shoulder blades. If you have a dog that is longer than tall, for example a corgi or dachshund, then measure the length of the dog's leg from the back of the elbow to the floor to approximate one stride length. Weave between cones. The goal of this exercise is to increase spinal flexibility and strengthen the core as well as the abductor and adductor muscles of the shoulders and hips. Set your cones stride length apart. Start with the dog at one end of the cones and with a food lure, guide the dog around each cone in a weaving pattern, right to left or left to right, taking note to stay close to the cones. The closer the cones are, the more difficult the exercise. It is important to work this exercise slow and controlled so all of the muscles are engaged. All four feet should maintain contact with the floor. It is not an agility exercise.
Figure eights. This video demonstrates the figure eight exercise. The goal of this exercise is to encourage weight shifting and increase spinal flexibility, as well as strengthen the abductor and adductor muscles of the shoulders and hips. Place two cones four to six feet apart. Using a food lure, guide the dog around the cones in a figure eight pattern. Watch the dog's neck position so the treat is not held too high. The closer the dog is to the cone, the more its spine will flex. In order to ensure proper muscle engagement, be sure that the movement is controlled and that all four feet maintain contact with the floor. A cool down is important to bring your dog's body back to its normal physiological state. A gradual reduction in heart rate, blood pressure, etc. lowers the probability of post-exercise disturbances in cardiac rhythm. Similar to the warm-up, the cool-down will promote arterial circulation, which aids in the effective removal of metabolic waste and rebalancing of oxygenation within muscle cells. To cool down your dog after your workout, it is recommended to go for a 5-10 to 10 minute loose leash walk.